What's going on everybody? I'm working back in the pump hole again. Today, it's going to be part three of my DIY irrigation install. And this is going to be the planting phase. So I've been out here playing with this pump since I made a video about this last time. And between doing that, playing with the pump, and reading up all my materials, my research materials, I figured out a few things. And today I got to figure out how many PSI and GPMs this guy's putting out so I can plan all my zones. And then I can know exactly how many valves to order, what controller to order, how much pipe to order, and everything else. That's what this whole video is going to be about today. Alright, let's get right to it. I got one of these temporary unions right here. That way I don't have to do anything permanent to test what I'm testing today. And I've got a bucket set up out there. It's upside down right now, but that's what I'm going to use to measure GPMs. And I'm going to use this valve to set different pressures. So this is my basic setup. Got a bucket. Got my temporary pipe hooked up here. Now let's talk about buckets for a second. Five gallon buckets are not actually five gallons. So if you want to get it as close as possible, you need to calibrate it. You see, that's what I've done here. I took a known gallon container and I put five of them in there and I made sure the bucket was level and that's where the top of it was. That could cost you a second or two and could throw your readings off. Okay, let's just get after it right here. Now watch this pressure gauge and watch my valve right here. I'm just opening it up. Did you notice what that clip showed? When you shut that valve off, the pressure goes up. When you gank it wide open, the pressure goes way down. So when your GPMs, when you open it up all the way and you got more volume, that's your G, volume is being GPM, your pressure goes down. You see that inverse. I, I hope that showed you what was going on there. Okay, I'm gonna take four different readings. 25 PSI, 30 PSI, 35, and 40. If you watch to the end of the video, all this is going to make sense. And you're going to see as that pressure goes up, the GPMs are going to go down. But this is the information you need to know when you're setting up your zones. Okay, so you saw that time. Now you wanna do five gallon bucket. It's gonna be five divided by the number of seconds, 18, then times 60 seconds, 16 and two thirds pretty much. So we'll call that 16 at 25. Twenty three seconds at thirty PSI. So let's take five divided by twenty three times sixty equals right at thirteen. Let's go record that.
36. So 5 divided by 36 times 60 equals 8 and 3rd. We're going to call that 8. That's bad. Five divided by 120 seconds times 60, two and a half gallons a minute at 40. Did you notice how those numbers affect one another, the GPM and the uh, pressure? It's kind of like what that pump performance chart said. The one, you know, the sheet that comes with your pump or before you order, the one you look at. Now that you got all those numbers, it's time to measure. You're going to want to measure your entire area where you plan on growing stuff. It doesn't matter. You can use one of these or one of these. Just try to get as accurate of measurement as you can and record it on like a rough draft piece of paper. Okay, now that you're done with all your measuring, you're gonna end up with something like this. Now this is obviously not the scale, this is just a rough drawing. And I also noted things like there's a gate there and where the shade is. The shade's gonna play into, it's a good idea to put a separate zone in the shade because it's not gonna need enough, it's blah. It's not gonna need as much water as a area that's full sun. Now that you've got all the measurements you need, your GPMs, your pressures, you've gotten a layout of your yard. You know how far it is from this post to this post and you've got your whole yard, all the measurements. It's time to do some mechanic work. I'm gonna start by installing her in in this chair right here. Watch. So at this point, you're gonna want your rough draft of your area, cheap compass, graph paper, a pencil with a good eraser. You're gonna need that eraser. And then you're gonna need, in this case, I have a Rainbird catalog. You don't have to use Rainbird, you can use anybody, and you don't have to go to the irrigation place and get the catalog. You can print all this offline for whatever products you wanna use. In this case, I'm gonna use Rainbird because I got the catalog right here. Now at this point, you're gonna to wanna to take all your measurements from here and convert them to your graph paper, which will make them be the scale. You can use one square as a foot, or in my case, I usually make one square or one, you know, from line to line be two feet. Whatever works for you. It don't matter. It probably depends on how big your yard is. But let me take care of that right quick because nobody wants to see me have to do all this. So, now, isn't that pretty? Look, everything's done to scale. Notice I made a notation that there's a shade across this way most of the time. And in the future, I'm going to have a mulch bed off the back fence of my house, of my yard, rather, right here. I noted this patio looks weird because I haven't extended it yet, but I'm not going to irrigate somewhere that it's going to be pavers before it's over with. Now, here comes the fun part. This is why I measured those pressures how I did. See, now you can go in here and look. And you can see that it'll consume, how much GPMs will consume at what pressure. Now on a zone, let's just say, because what I had, 2.5 GPMs? Yes, at 40. So on this uh, 270 nozzle, if I had to use that, like I've already consumed it at 45, or you said 40, I've almost already consumed it. 2.31 GPMs off one sprinkler. Okay, so at this point, you're pretty much just playing a numbers game. Okay, look at this. I, um, this Orvan 24 is probably what I'm going to use in this corner down here. 
And now on a 90 degree at 35 pounds, it'll throw 20 feet and it'll use 0.65 gallons a minute. So you take your trusty compass and I'm gonna locate one right here and one right here and one right here. And we're gonna do 20. 20 is gonna be 10 blocks in my case, so. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Take my compass. Get that measurement going. And then just do this number right here. And that's just an example. You really want to try to get 100% overlap, meaning that this one will hit this one and this one and back and back and forth. But there's no set rule. You just try to do the best you can. I mean, I'm not a professional. I'm just trying not to dig my yard up three times to make everything work right. And doing it this way and spending this little bit of extra time is really going to help that. So let's see. That one at 20 foot put out 0.6 five gallons a minute so that's going to be 0.65 times three whatever that is and check what out what it says right here you can use those r van nozzles and the 5000 series rotors if you use the npr nozzles together on the same zone a lot of times they tell you not to do spray heads and rotors on the same zone but this this is the exception to the rule and i think i'm gonna use some of these with those other ones to get that um precipitation rate right so we're over here on the rainbird 5000 chart 35 psi that quarter nozzle job right there we'll throw a radius of 30 feet at 1.2 gallons a minute so i can actually run two of these guys right here on this same zone and still be well within that eight gpms Cause this was 3.3, these four guys, and then 1.2, that's 2.4. Yeah, so I'm well within that. I can run all this together on the same zone. So there's one zone right there. Now watch this, I'm gonna put my, make it 30. Actually, that was why I had to get back now cause it's gonna throw all over the patio. Let's do this one. Yeah, that looks nice. I'm going to make this one where I'll back it down when that time comes in real life over here. Voila. All right, everybody. Here's the finished project for the backyard, at least. I've got my zone totals up here. All of them are under eight. And it's going to be three zones. Only thing that's kind of weird, and I don't know how it's going to work, is I got one, and I'm just going to put a big nozzle and let it do the shade. And I probably won't run it as long. I hope this makes sense. Drop a comment down below if there's something I didn't explain that you want to know. Hopefully you made it through all that without being bored to death. If you did, thank you. Now I'm going to let everybody know who watches this video, like all 30 of you, that I'm not a professional and everything you saw me do today was just based off of what little bit I know about how pressures and stuff work due to like doing mechanic work. And where um, I've read on it online, there's a really good resource called Irrigation Tutorials, and it kind of outlines what I talked about today. So go check that out. Don't take my word for it. Now, how good is this thing going to work? I, I don't know. I would, but I'd much rather try to figure out the math side of it before I just go digging up my yard. So 
go ahead and hit that subscribe button if you want to see how it turns out because if it turns out great great if it don't i'll make a video about it or not and i'll show where i screwed up because i'll figure it out eventually but i just don't want you to go take what i say as gospel just letting you know this is my first rodeo and i'm just trying to document how i'm going about it so thanks for watching hit that like button for me if you don't mind hit that subscribe button to see how this turns out because I'm going to do precipitation rates with rain gauges for us over wet. I'm going to see how even I got it. Let's see if I knocked it out of the park or if I need help. One or the other. Thanks for watching. Come back and see me.